I like Jalen Rose, but this is a ridiculous take. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about former NBA player, now ESPN analyst, Jalen Rose, complaining about the roster for Team USA men's basketball that's going to Tokyo for the Summer Olympics. He's saying that they whoever they may be, are afraid to put out an entirely black team. And he's saying that the only white guy on the squad, Kevin Love, is there because of tokenism. Now, there's so much I want to say here, but before we go down that road, let's go ahead and roll the clip. In this clip, you'll see and hear what Jalen Rose was saying in full context. After we get done watching that, I'll come back. I'll talk about what he said there. Then I give you my two cents, my deep detail analysis and then i wrap it on up with a nice bow on top so without further ado let's go ahead and roll it i'm excited about the roster and i assume and i know we're gonna win the gold but i'm disappointed in something as i do this show every day i do it in front of a picture of tommy smith and john carlos raising their fists at the olympics I also know the favoritism that Christian Leitner was shown when he got a chance to be put on the dream team ahead of Shaq and Alonzo, but they made it so that a college player could even get on and gave him favoritism. But this level of, and I got a word for it, Kevin Love is on the team because of tokenism. Don't be scared to make an all black team representing the United States of America. I'm disappointed by that. Anybody that watched the league this year knows Kevin Love did not have a stellar season, was not the best player on his team, and did not necessarily deserve to be on this squad. And I'm not gonna take him off the squad and not put somebody else on it. I'm gonna tell you whose spot that should be. That should be a young man that was born in the Bahamas, that is a McDonald's All-American, played in high school and college, in Phoenix, Arizona. DeAndre Ayton should have Kevin Love's spot. And I'm disappointed in Team USA for not having the courage to send an all-black team to the Olympics. All right, so you saw that, you heard that. Now, Jalen, 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 where do I begin? Um, first of all, you're just wrong. You're just totally wrong. Did you do any kind of research before this? You just went on TV and just started talking. You pushed the record button on your webcam, wherever you are, and just let it rip. No research, no nothing. First of all, five of the previous six NBA teams that went to the Olympics have been 100% black. And I'll play some pictures on the screen before you so you can see what I'm talking about. You may see a couple of light-skinned guys right there, but they're not white. At the most, might be biracial, like Clay Thompson, Jason Kidd, uh, Tayshaun Prince, guys like that. They're black. They're not white. If anything, they're black and white, but they're not white guys, all right? So why would, quote-unquote, they be afraid to put out an entirely black team when they have done so for five of the previous six Olympics? It makes no sense. There have only been five white guys on the Team USA men's basketball team ever, and that's Chris Mullen, Christian Layton. I'll talk about him in a minute. Um, John Stockton, Kevin Love, and Larry Bird. That's it. Everybody else has not been white. All right, now, Christian Leitner, sir, put some respect on Christian Leitner's name, all right? He was unstoppable in college. That's a fact. One of the best college basketball players to ever play the game. Now, once he got to the NBA, he was an okay guy. He was never like a perennial all-star, a guy you would just write down for being the best of the best. He wasn't like Kevin Durant, LeBron, Jordan, David Robinson, any of these guys. But he was a beast in college. So don't just say, oh, he was there because he was, to he was a token, because of favoritism, all this and that and the third. He was a really, really good player. Now... Speaking about a dream team, when Leitner was on there, 1992, let's talk about the dream team. A lot of great guys. I think Barkley was on that team, Jordan, and there was another guy by the name of Magic Johnson. Now, this was a very interesting time in basketball 
something happened right before the Dream Team came to be that changed the NBA forever. Not necessarily at its core, but it changed certain little rules in the NBA. Now, what was that? Well, Magic Johnson said that he had HIV in 1991. So the Dream Team, that was 92. So he had the virus on the Dream Team. So was he there with the virus because of tokenism for LGBT? Although I don't know about him being LGBT. So why, why was Magic there with this virus? I mean, you tell me what's going on. And speaking about favoritism and tokenism, Isaiah Thomas was not there. Who's one of the best basketball players to ever do it? One of the best to ever do it. And he complains about not being on that team all the time to this day. Like 30 years later, he's still talking about not being on that team. Now, why was he not on that team? Well, some say it was Jordan. Some say it was Magic Johnson. Hit his friend. He'd be out there in the court kissing them on the cheek. All this and that in the third. Because Isaiah allegedly said that Magic would be out doing some LGBT stuff. And that's why he got the virus. Maybe that's why he was not on the team. So you talking about nepotism, favoritism. Maybe that was going on to keep Isaiah off the squad. Just maybe. And you're speaking about white guys not having an all-black team. Now, let's go back to the Dream Team's roster. Let's look at it. I don't know the entire squad off top of my head, but I do know that at least four, I think four of the five white guys that were ever on any NBA Olympic team were on this team. And that was John Stockton, Larry Bird, Chris Mullen, and Christian Leitner. Now, are you going to call Larry Bird a token? Larry Bird, really? One of the top NBA players ever? John Stockton, is he uh, a token? Chris Mullen of Run TMC, the Golden State Warriors, w was he a token? I don't think so. So this whole, you know, he's there because he's a token, white guy, all this and that and the third is just silly. Now, this roster that they have this year is okay. But... Let's not act like Kevin Love is the only guy on and it's not necessarily like the best of the best. I'm not saying Kevin Love is a great player. He's not a scrub. He already has an Olympic gold medal from 2012. Now, granted, that was a long time ago. That's like a million years ago in basketball years. Um, and he's not the player that he used to be. But there's a lot of guys. There's at least probably about two or three guys on the squad that I can say are not that great right now. Okay, Draymond Green. Uh, triple single type guy. He has really high numbers, but not very high. Like eight points, eight assists, eight rebounds. That's Draymond Green. He's a great system player, not a good player on his own. If you put Draymond Green as a star of the team, he's not going to do well at all. It never has been that way. Although Kevin Love has been a star of the team back on the Timberwolves, and he was doing great until LeBron James came and got him and put him on the Cavaliers to be a spot-up three-point shooter, but that's a different story, and I digress. The whole point is that Draymond Green never been a really good player at all. Who else you got? Drew Holiday is okay. He's a pretty good player for the Bucks. Bradley Beal, Chris Middleton, these are these guys are okay. They, they're okay, but where are your LeBron James, James Harden, Kyrie Irving? Uh, who else is a good player? It's, it's a lot of good guys. Anthony Davis, where are these guys at? I don't really know, but I think you have to volunteer for this. And you know what? There would be more white guys on the NBA uh, team going to the Olympics if there weren't so many foreign white guys in the NBA. It's, it's rare to find an American white player on the NBA. They're usually European. Uh, one of the best basketball players in the whole league is Luka Doncic from Serbia. So if he's going to the Olympics, play for the Serbian team. Same thing with Nikola Jokic, also Serbian. He played for the uh, Serbian team. Matter of fact, I think Jokic is the current NBA MVP, deservedly so, for the Denver Nuggets. One of the best guys to do it. There's also some foreign guys that are black that are not on the team, probably because they want to go play for their national team. Uh, uh, the new Shaq, in my humble opinion, Giannis Antetokounmpo is actually from Greece. His parents are Nigerian, but he grew up in Greece. I think he might have been born in Greece. So he played for the Greek national team he play, if he plays at all. He might not want to play. He's still playing right now in the NBA Finals. Might win a championship. So he might, he might be a little busy to do something like that. But if he was to play, it'd be for the Greek national team. 
there's a lot of guys that don't want to play or can't play or play for their home team. Another guy, Dirk Nowitzki, one of the best guys to ever do it, a white guy. He's German, played for the German national team, not Team USA. If I'm right about that, wrong about that, you guys let me know in the comments. At the end of the day, as I close, I think Jalen Rose just sadly mistaken. There are plenty of players that could be on a team that are not, that don't want to play. They want to just go have a vacation. They want to go chill. You know, guys like Kyrie Irving, they kind of like Ricky Williams. You want to go smoke weed and go into some other little, you know, you want to kind of like be like a hippie, basically. If more of the top guys in the league wanted to play on Team USA, then Kevin Love wouldn't be there. But they don't. And he's no scrub. He's not what he used to be, but he's not a trash player. And they would still win the gold medal like he already has before. So this whole thing about tokenism, afraid to put black players out there, totally black teams is crazy. Oh, and one last thing. It's funny how this whole dynamic works. If you don't have a 100% black team one time out of the past, I don't know, 15, 20 years, then that's a problem. Just one white guy, that's a problem. But when they had the Oscars so white, and that was majority white people that were winning and whatnot, then that was a problem. And we got to put more of a different race in there. But when you have mostly blacks, you got to have all blacks. And if you got one guy that may have earned this spot to get there, um, an Olympic veteran, that's wrong. So it's weird how you can have a 100% um, of one race one way, and you want to keep that. But when it's 70% of a race one way, that's too much. And you want to knock it down to about 50 or 40 or it's just totally strange. You can have an all black award show and that's fine. But if it's majority white, then that's a problem. It's weird. You know, it's just totally weird. I say everything should be a meritocracy. Okay. If you have the, the best players, you play the best movies, you win the award and an award show, quite frankly, is kind of an empty thing. Uh, we talking about sports. That's a true meritocracy. You can be evaluated right there on the field, on the court by those that are watching with art. It's a little bit more subjective, but with basketball, either you can play or you can't play it's just that simple. But I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you, how do you feel about what Jalen Rose said? Was he right? Was he wrong? Whatever your thoughts on that are, let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I stand. I like Jalen Rose. I like what he's doing with the whole uh, JRLA. That's the Jalen Rose Leadership Academy. I like what he's doing, trying to get kids educated in Detroit. Fantastic. Bravo. Hats off. But right here in this time, you're wrong. I'm not sure if the wokeness over at ESPN is getting to you. You know, I know how it is to be over there in them trenches. Okay. I know kind of how it is to be behind enemy lines. But you might want to take that video down. You might want to reevaluate and come back and say something else because I I'm seeing him getting ratio all over the place by guys that are not political, guys that are political. Everybody's ratioing them because that was a bad take. Regardless, most of the previous Team USA teams have been totally black. They're not afraid to do it because they've done it in the past. Why would they do it in the past but not do it now because they're afraid to? It makes no sense at all. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.